Is summer finally coming? Well, the short answer is, for some of us, yes, we will get a glimpse of something a bit more summery during the latter part of this week. I'll have more details about this coming up, and I'll be looking at everything weather through the rest of this deep dive. Welcome along. I'm Alex Burkill, a presenter and meteorologist here at the Met Office. I'm coming to you from our headquarters in Exeter, and I will be talking for the next 20, possibly 30 minutes or so. If you've not watched any of our deep dives before, welcome. If you have and you're a returning viewer, then welcome back. But let's start off looking at what happened yesterday. And you may be aware, yesterday was St. Swithin's Day, the 15th of July, named after St. Swithin, the Bishop of Winchester from the 9th century. And the saying goes, if you have rain on St. Swithin's Day, you'll then have it for 40 days and nights. If it's sunny, then you'll have that instead for 40 days or 40 nights. Now, worth bearing in mind that uh, as far as records go back, so as far as 1861, that has never happened. We've never had 40 consecutive days of the same weather following St. Swithin's Day, but uh, there are some people that still think it may be true. I think many of us looking at yesterday's weather will be grateful that it probably isn't going to be the case. And well, to be honest, it definitely isn't going to be the case for the UK. If we look at the picture that we had yesterday across us, and if I put our radar on, and if I go through yesterday's picture, and you'll probably be aware, but across much of England and Wales, we had some heavy rain pushing its way and a really wet start to the week. Particularly across England and Wales, even eastern parts of Scotland had some heavy thundery downpours. But yes, England and Wales, it really was a very wet day yesterday, lots of rain around. But I also want to draw your attention to what was happening over some northern parts of Ireland. Uh, if we look, towards the far north of Ireland, and if I dart back to yesterday afternoon, and there were some intense thundery downpours that kicked off here. And with that then, I have got some footage of a funnel cloud, and this was uh, taken in Letterkenny by Gary Price, and you can see, yes, the funnel cloud did develop. Um, you can't quite see whether or not it was touching the ground. It doesn't really look like it actually was touching the ground, so probably not a tornado, but nonetheless a funnel cloud, and that is quite dramatic, and it's some very good footage of this in, uh, that we have here. Just to go back to the radar image for uh, northern parts of Ireland, and the fact that we had these intense thunderstorms, that intense convection, that really goes in line with the, uh, with the fact that a tornado could form. So it's no great surprise that happened. There were reports of some tornadoes uh, in parts of southwest England over the weekend as well, and just goes to show, yes, in the British Isles, we do get some uh, tornadoes and some funnel clouds at times, albeit they're generally not all that damaging and generally pretty short-lived. But I know what you're saying. Alex, you told me we might get something more summary coming this week, so let's take a look at that. Let's start off looking at the bigger picture that we have at the moment. As we go through the uh, next 24 hours or so, we are going to see a ridge of high pressure building across southern parts, so the weather is going to be turning a bit drier. If I get rid of the jet stream for a second, put the rain on instead, and as you can see, as we go into Wednesday, there will be some fine weather for many of us, a few showers around, but on the whole, largely dry and a decent amount of sunshine too. Later on, as we go through uh, into Thursday, there is a weather system coming in from the west-northwest, and that's going to bash up against that high pressure. So it's not going to make a huge amount of progress across the UK, but for the northwestern parts of the UK, particularly parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, we are going to see some rain making its way in as we go through Thursday. What then happens thereafter, and we have to look a little bit further to the west. And if I put the jet stream back on, and as we go through the next 24, 48 hours or so, we are going to see an active jet developing just to the eastern side of Canada. And this active jet is going to do a couple of things. It's going to amplify a feature out to the west of the UK. And so that means this feature here is going to become a bit more intense as we go towards the end of the week. As a result, if I put my rain back on, through into Friday, again towards northwestern parts of the UK, we could get some rain pushing in due to this active feature that will be coming in from the west. A bit of uncertainty as to how far that pushes in, but do just be aware, northwestern parts of the country could have some wet weather on Friday. But it's the temperatures that we want to look at. And if I put on our 
winds and our air mass and you can see because of that jet driving this trophy feature that will allow us to be dragging in our air from the south as we go through the second half of this week and that means we're going to be dragging in some hot air so our temperatures are set to rise how high a bit of uncertainty but it does look like we're going to get something markedly hotter across at least the southeast than it has been recently if we look at our maximum temperatures forecast and if I take London for example, if I actually click on it, we'll try third time lucky, okay fourth time lucky, okay I don't know why this isn't working, it worked when I practiced, let's try Glasgow first of all, here we go, so Glasgow starting off and you can see there's not any major change in temperatures. It gets a little bit warmer through Wednesday because of the generally fine picture, but then with the chance of something a bit more unsettled coming in from the northwest on both Thursday and Friday, temperatures are no, nothing really to write home about high teens, low 20s, so not too bad by any means, but not exceptionally warm at all. However, if we look at London, and it is now going to work, there we go, uh, and temperatures are really going to rise as we go through this week. So low 20s, up to mid to high 20s, probably even low 30s in some places on Friday, 30, 31 Celsius looks quite likely. And then we're likely to see temperatures dropping down a bit. I'll talk about that again in a bit more uh, in a bit more in a second because I just wanted to point out that it's not just by day that it's going to be pretty hot. It's also by night that we're going to have some high temperatures. My touch screen is really not playing ball at the moment, um, so I will uh, carry on anyway. And if we look at our minimum temperatures for London, and you can see that uh, mid teens at, through the next couple of nights but then rising to high teens possibly even low 20s some places through uh, Thursday night possibly Friday night may stay above 20 Celsius which would make it a tropical night now these kind of temperatures really difficult for sleeping some people might struggle now as a result there is a heat health alert out that's been issued by the UK Health Security Agency because of the fact that yes it's going to be quite hot by day but also uncomfortably warm by night for some places particularly towards the southeast of the UK so just be aware of that what happens thereafter and does the hot weather last? Well, no. Uh, it looks like as we go through the weekend, we are going to see, I'm going to put my rain and get rid of the jet. Uh, we're going to see a system eventually making its way across the UK. And so that's going to bring some rain to many places as we go through the weekend and also a change to something cooler. So our temperatures are then going to drop again. There is some uncertainty about the timing of this feature. There's a fair chance that this frontal system takes a a little bit longer to push through in which case particularly towards east and southeastern parts Saturday actually looks like a decent day and we will keep with that very warm hot weather could possibly still be in the low 30s for some places on Saturday but there is a reasonable chance that the system will come through and bring that change to something more changeable a bit wetter and also cooler as we go through Saturday and then also Sunday as well. Thereafter that's likely to clear through and then as we go into next week low pressure somewhere towards the north of the UK yes high pressure towards the south but relatively far towards the south and this pattern will allow for a mobile westerly pattern to develop as we go through next week and so that suggests that we're going to see rain coming in from the west northwest at times uh, and uh, no great shakes temperature wise uh, feeling pretty cool not that much like summer at times because of the more changeable weather that we're likely to see as we go through next week but then there are some promising signs towards the end of July and the start of August if I show you this chart and this shows the most likely pressure trends with the greater the bar the more greater the likelihood the reds the oranges showing higher pressure and so that's what's most likely as we go through the latter part of this week which goes in line with that hot weather that I've just talked about and the idea that it's going to be a bit more settled for a time across much not all but much of the UK then we go to the blues and so a more changeable wetter pattern and these darker blues show a positive NAO so that's the that mobile westerly theme that I just showed you that's most likely as we go through next week and so it's a fairly changeable at times unsettled story 
But into the following week and towards the very end of the month, there are some reds returning again. So there's a greater chance than next week anyway, a greater chance that we could see something a bit more settled developing. Even if it doesn't happen towards the end of the month and we have to wait until August for something a bit more settled, there are some signs that we could see something a bit drier, perhaps a bit warmer, and if it does happen, it could be a bit more prolonged than this real just glimpse of summer that we're going to have as we go through next week. Now, I mentioned the fact that we have a uh, heat health alert out and you may be saying that those temperatures aren't that high and you're right in as much as they're not record breaking, but they could still cause some problems for some people, particularly those more susceptible to the heat. And so the majority of us will just notice that it's pretty hot if you're in the southeast especially, but most people won't be bothered. But I think what mo many of us will notice will be the change to what it's been because I think it's fair to say that so far this summer it's been fairly disappointing. Or has it? Because if we look at the statistics, and let's start off with our mean temperature, and this is the rolling mean temperature through summer so far. And yes, it has actually been lower than average by around a degree or so, not quite a degree, um, than below average temperature-wise so far this summer. And uh, not record-breaking. You can see the blue line at the bottom shows the uh, coolest summer on record. This black line in the middle is average, and this blue line shows this summer. And so you can see it is, has been cooler than average so far this summer. But what about rain? It feels like it's been raining constantly this season. To be honest, it feels like it's been raining constantly since I started full-time presenting. But actually, if we look at summer so far, it's been generally a little bit drier than average. Yes, as we've uh, gone through taking yesterday's heavy rain into account, we've got pretty much up to average. So it's uh, very close to average for summer at this stage in the season. That being said, there is some more unsettled changeable weather to come as we go through next week, so things could change as we go through the uh, rest of July, but actually, even though it feels like it's been really wet recently, it hasn't been that wet overall when we look at summer so far. If we look at July, it's a slightly different story. Again, looking at our mean temperature, and you can see that it's been significantly cooler than, cooler than average through pretty much the whole of July so far, which I don't think will be a huge surprise to many of you. But if we look at rainfall amounts, and again, not a huge surprise, it has been significantly wetter than average so far through this month. Again, nowhere near record-breaking levels, but nonetheless, it has been quite a wet start to the month. And if we look at that in a different way. Here are our maps comparing the rainfall totals that we've seen so far up to including yesterday, so the first 15 days of July, not quite half, uh, and this is comparing them with the average for the whole month. And so the areas where it's white show where we've had near average rainfall, but remember we're comparing the first half of summer 2024 with the whole of summer average. And uh, yes, towards the northwest of the UK, it has been uh, a fair bit drier, but that could all change next week with that more changeable, that westerly pattern that I mentioned coming in from the west. Um, and uh, so that could change. We could get a wetter picture towards northwestern parts of the UK. But in the southeast and across eastern parts, it's been significantly wetter than average so far this July. In fact, some places, Berkshire, City of London, Hertfordshire, have already had around 150% of their average July rainfall, and we're not even halfway through the month yet pretty much halfway, but not quite halfway through the month yet. And so it has been really wet for some of us. Great, then uh, one thing else that I did want to point out to you is I talked uh, a lot about the uh, longer range forecast, what we can expect through the next week, 14 days or so. If you do want more information about what we can expect through the next 14 days, make sure you do check out our longer range forecast, which is available on our app. If you don't have it, then you can download it in all the usual places. Um, but if you haven't seen, then make sure you scroll down below the video forecast. There's an option to click on the UK long range weather forecast, and if you do, there'll be a bit of text and also our 14-day video which we update every Tuesday and Friday. So I will be updating that shortly with more detail about what we can expect in terms of the weather uh, as we go through the rest of July. 
Now, a couple of things that I wanted to uh, end on before I leave you today, and we're going to look globally. So starting off across southeastern parts of Europe, because we have had some very high temperatures there recently. If I put the jet stream back on, uh, and the jet has really formed the boundary through the last week or so between something a bit fresher, the cooler air to the north of the jet, which has been affecting northern parts of Europe, including the UK, which is why it's been a bit disappointing so far this July. Whereas across southern parts of Europe, a very different story. Temperatures for some places have been 5, 10 or more degrees above average. And there have been heat wave conditions across parts of Spain and further east into Italy, Greece, Macedonia, uh, Turkey. These places have seen temperatures in excess of 40 Celsius and some very warm, sticky nights as well. That The heat wave conditions, particularly across southeast Europe, are going to continue through much of this week before starting to ease as we go through the weekend. But still, the risk of some places seeing temperatures in excess of 40 Celsius. Still some tropical nights, so some difficult sticky nights with temperatures staying above 20 Celsius. Um, and with all that uh, taken into account some very dry air, the risk of thunderstorms, there's an increased risk of wildfires in some of these places as well. So that could cause some issues. The other thing globally that I wanted to uh, draw your attention to is what's happening in uh, southern India at the moment. So recent week or so, the recent week or so across much of Asia, we have had heavier than normal monsoon rain. Now it is monsoon season, but the rain has been even heavier than normal across parts of India, Pakistan, Nepal. We've seen some impacts as a result. Through this week, it looks like the heaviest monsoon rain will be across southern parts of India. Now, July is India's wettest month, but the average is around 1,000 millimetres. And some places in southern India could see around six to 700 millimetres in just this week alone. So a large chunk of that uh, July rainfall will be coming in just a week or so, which is why we are going to see some issues due to the heavy rain. But like I said, across many parts of Asia, it has been very wet recently. The monsoon season has been wetter than normal. I think that's everything that I wanted to go through with you today. I do hope you enjoyed it. Remember, as always, I will be answering any questions you have in the comments. Uh, so do leave a comment if you're watching this, particularly if you're watching it closer to four o'clock on Tuesday, because that's when I'll be looking. But I will look again uh, later on as well. So do leave any comments that you have. I do enjoy reading them, particularly the positive ones. Also, remember, if you uh, have enjoyed what I've been through, then make sure you hit the like button, maybe subscribe to our channel if you don't already. And remember, you can share this video with someone who you might think may find something that I've talked about today a bit interesting. So please do that. Otherwise, uh, I will see you again soon. Have a lovely rest of your day and enjoy your evening. Bye bye.